Okay, I'm going to talk about separate critical minerals in general in Queensland. So the topic of the discussion is going to be both a bit more specific than the title. I'm not going to talk about all copper deposits in the world of different types, uh, but it's also going to be more general because I'm going to touch uh, critical mineral potential as byproducts in base metal deposits in North Queensland in more general. And because I'm on the third presentation, uh, so I can also start from setting the scene and repeating what critical minerals are, because it is a, a pretty fluid definition. Uh, the concept is, uh, is not new. I was pretty surprised to find out that uh, the concept is about 100 years old. It's, uh, it's probably more than a century old. So for example, there was a, a, a compilation on strategic and uh, critical minerals uh, stockpiling act in the United States of America, 1939. And some minerals are the same. So for example, in 1939, tungsten was critical mineral, so was chromium, and they stay critical to this day. And many other minerals have changed a great deal with the development of technology. And there are different definitions around the world, but basically the concept is based on a combination of two major factors. The major strategic importance, of a particular commodity, uh, historically for defense, but also for high-tech and renewable energy industries, and uh, major supply risks. And other two attributes, which are both uh, geological and economical, uh, these commodities uh, have a tendency to be geologically dispersed. Uh, many of them don't form up uh, large accumulations in their own right. Uh, they're quite typically characterized by uh, low global production volumes. So the market is not particularly deep. And uh, uh, quite often there is a high geographic concentration of uh, global supply to one and two global countries. And uh, major supply risks uh, is a uh, uh, key uh, characteristic in defining critical minerals. So the most current definition uh, in Australia, uh, as per Australia's critical mineral strategy released last year uh, is shown here. Uh, there are some common uh, uh, commodities which uh, many people know. It's uh, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, rare earths. Uh, carbon uh, uh, here stands for uh, graphite, not diamonds, for those friends of diamonds in the audience. And uh, uh, lots of commodities are uh, much less traditional and uh, much less known, uh, like gallium, germanium, indium. So Australia generally is well endowed in them, and so is Queensland, the focus of our discussion today. So there's an obvious cluster of critical minerals occurrences in the Mount Isa province, where the map shows a large concentration of cobalt occurrences, but there is much more than cobalt in that region, as we discussed later. So potential economic concentration of critical minerals, uh, uh, as was uh, discussed by Helen and by Rick, uh, there are two main uh, modes of occurrence as main commodities. And uh, uh, these occurrences are well known, tin, tungsten, molybdenum, and cobalt, uh, lithium occurrence, and uh, uh, much less known to the general public, including the professional public, is uh, actual and potential byproducts, such as uh, cobalt, gallium, germanium. Indian platinum group elements. And uh, it is the second group for, for where there is a great paucity of publicly available information on those potential byproducts. And uh, that's why I want to focus uh, specifically on this group. So to highlight them up, uh, separately. These are the commodities which, uh, which are known to exist in Queensland. And uh, some of them have a history of historic production. Some of them are actually uh, extracted right now including uh, gallium, germanium, and indium, even though it's not recorded as Australian production because the production occurs on overseas smelters. And uh, some others occur as uh, uh, potentially extractable commodities in uh, other deposits. So this discussion is based on uh, a review of uh, comprehensive multi-element geochemistry uh, from key base metal deposits in North Queensland, particularly focus on, co on copper. Uh, information is based both on our uh, current program, uh, we have done more than uh, a thousand uh, analysis of representative samples uh, around the region, 
in cooperation, collaboration with CSRO in the Union of Kunzen. Uh, there is also a, a fair bit of available information, not necessarily in the public domain, from uh, from companies. So we have some company data, and so there is uh, published research information. So overall, uh, the analysis is based on uh, close to 5,000 uh, individual uh, geochemical analysis. So to put it in, uh, in the geological context, uh, the significant deposit types in North Queensland are known to contain uh, significant concentrations of uh, critical minerals. Uh, sediment-hosted copper, ICG family, and uh, sediment-hosted uh, zinc lead silver in Mount Isa province. Uh, less known and uh, much less voluminous uh, deposits of uh, tungsten moly bismuth and uh, polymetallic copper tin veins in the east. And a very important and a very rarely discussed group of phosphorites in the Georgina Basin, but that's going to be a topic of discussion by Matt Valtich later today. So zooming into Mount Isa, there is a large group of uh, so-called ICG deposits and affiliated copper gold and um, molybdenum deposits. Uh, best known examples include Ernest uh, Henry, uh, Mount Elliot Swan, Eloise, Eva, and uh, I'm using uh, brackets here because uh, it is a pretty diverse family of deposits. Sediment hosted deposits are uh, uh, mostly known in, uh, in the western part of the Mount Isa province. And uh, sediment hosted zinc lead uh, silver deposits uh, around Mount Isa, uh, George Fisher, Lady Lorette, Central River. So we have done in the past 18 months most work focusing on uh, copper gold deposits. And uh, this diagram simply illustrates uh, the geochemical uh, variety, geochemical complexity of this family. Even though there is a consistent uh, geochemical signature uh, widely considered to be typical for ICG uh, systems, uh, it is not consistent. It varies greatly between deposits. So uh, uh, any conclusions we can make about uh, uh, copper gold deposits in eastern succession of Mount Isa, uh, they're not uh, generally applicable to all deposits. So this is further illustrated by this pretty complex diagram. The main message of this is, uh, uh, is uh, to highlight uh, yet again uh, the great variety, great complexity of uh, geochemical characteristics of ICG related deposits. And uh, by the way, for each individual line, it's uh, uh, an individual analysis of 0.5% uh, copper plus or more than uh, 250 ppm molybdenum. So uh, the most obvious significant enrichment of uh, critical minerals is around cobalt, and uh, some grades get to, uh, to the lower grades uh, commonly extracted in other parts of the world today. Another interesting one is uh, indium. Uh, the enrichment in some deposits uh, go to a couple of orders of magnitude. And uh, much more obvious, more spectacular, uh, but limited to just a few deposits of uh, enrichment in rhenium. Uh, which is uh, uh, specifically focused in uh, molybdenum rich varieties of uh, uh, ICG family. And to add more validity to the observations on, uh, uh, on individual samples, uh, some bulk grades of uh, identified deposits uh, indicate very significant enrichments, particularly in rhenium. So uh, one of those deposits is uh, uh, melon. Uh, the highest grade, to my knowledge, iridium deposit in the world, and also, to my knowledge, uh, the only deposit where iridium could be potentially economic to extract as the main commodity. So overall, generalization about uh, ICG deposits in general, uh, the, most more, uh, the, the most common characteristic for all of them is uh, uh, enrichment in cobalt, and average bulk cobalt grades commonly of, uh, of the order of 300 to 800 ppm. And uh, it is comparable to uh, uh, byproduct grades in cobal, uh, nickel cobalt, cobalt, cobalt deposits of, uh, mined today. And there are high grades uh, present both within individual deposits and uh, in uh, cobalt rich variants of uh, uh, copper gold family, rich in 0.1, uh, 0.2% cobalt, 
and uh, uh, there are some examples of uh, 1% plus cobalt grades. Rhenium uh, is uh, significantly concentrated uh, only in molar rich uh, parts. So there are two deposits where rhenium grades estimated in bulk and uh, they're quite significant. I didn't discuss uh, uh, specifically and didn't show on graphs uh, rare earth elements. They are considered to be uh, uh, typically enriched in ICGs, but uh, in the Klankari district, uh, they are significantly enriched above 1,000 total rare earths uh, uh, in just a few deposits. Uh, so the highest enrichment is in Swan, and uh, on the same is, uh, is a bit lower than that. So the second significant uh, uh, copper deposit type in the region is uh, sediment-hosted copper. Well-known examples are uh, Mount Isaac copper, Capricorn copper, Mount Oxide, Bullford Creek. Uh, here, it's uh, quite obvious that uh, the most significant enrichment is uh, in cobalt. And uh, there was some historic production uh, uh, coming from Mount Isa. There were several years of uh, cobalt extraction from uh, the Mount Isa copper mine. And uh, bulk deposit copper grades uh, uh, go to uh, uh, above 1,000 ppm. And uh, individual parts of deposits uh, go to high grades. The next one is an uh, uh, exotic example from a uh, much well characterized and uh, much less known deposits from uh, uh, from uh, northeast Queensland. Uh, these are uh, distinct deposit types in the Herbert and Tin province, uh, tungsten moly bismuth uh, grazins like uh, Wolfram Camp, shown here in blue, and uh, polymetallic vein deposits of uh, copper tin in Balgammon. And it is quite obvious which is which, uh, particularly significant spectacular grades of uh, uh, indium enrichment in uh, polymetallic uh, tin co or copper deposits uh, centered around Balgammon, but uh, there is a whole uh, uh, district of significant indium enrichment to go into uh, hundreds to thousands of ppm. And uh, these are uh, very significant concentrations, uh, comparable in grades to uh, probably only to uh, tin polymetallic vein deposits in Bolivia. And in uh, uh, tungsten molybisma deposits, uh, obviously uh, tungsten and uh, molybdenum are significantly enriched. The last one is uh, uh, probably uh, uh, the least significant and comprehensive uh, uh, characterization of sediment hosted uh, uh, zinc lead silver deposits. This graph is uh, uh, seriously biased by, uh, by a single large anonymous deposit, which is going to stay anonymous for now. Uh, it doesn't show a significant absolute enrichment in uh, either gallium or germanium or indium, from which an erroneous conclusion may be reached that uh, it's not significantly uh, interesting as supplies of those materials. Uh, but we do know that uh, uh, zinc ores uh, from this part of the province uh, in uh, Western succession that uh, is a globally significant source of indium, germanium, and some gallium. And significant point to notice, uh, the single point of enrichment of uh, two orders of magnitude uh, above average crustal abundance, uh, it's uh, uh, typical or from uh, George Fisher. And uh, it, is large, uh, it is likely that uh, zinc concentrates of deposits like this uh, is a significant global source of supply today. So in quick conclusions, there are significant enrichment of several critical minerals of uh, major deposits of uh, copper, in particular cobalt, rare earth, and in places of, uh, of uh, rhenium and indium, and of, uh, zinc, lead, uh, silver, sediment hosted systems local enriched in indium and germanium, but uh, we don't really know uh, much about uh, sediment hosted systems in terms of their uh, potential, byproduct potential. There are extremely high grade uh, indium deposits in uh, polymetallic copper uh, tin deposits uh, in the east of the state. Uh, we know that uh, uh, sediment hosted zinc lead deposits are a significant source of global supply of uh, uh, indium as well as some uh, uh, germanium and gallium, but uh, uh, much work needs to be done to characterize uh, uh, their perspectivity in the state. And uh, uh, because these are byproduct commodities, uh, the extraction 
uh, for, is uh, always going to be restricted by uh, economics and scale of mining of main commodities, copper, zinc, lead, silver, and uh, hence our continuous interest in uh, deposits of these traditional commodities. And at the moment, well, these are very new results. Uh, it's, uh, it's not even hot of the press. Uh, it's uh, for most of these results are way off the press yet. So some of this G chemistry came back from uh, Web Priva in LS. We haven't even received the results yet. So uh, watch the space. Uh, we're continuing working on deposit characterization and characterizing critical mineral potential of Queenstown. And you will ho hear more in several subsequent presentations. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Vlad. Now we have had a couple of questions come through. So we might quickly answer those if we can. Craig Wilson asks, um, what critical minerals are currently being produced in Queensland? Uh, okay, so that's, uh, for, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, for, we know, well, there is su sufficient anecdotal evidence of production of uh, uh, indium, germanium and gallium, uh, but this is not uh, 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 happening on Australian shores. This is a uh, refinery business overseas. Uh, so gallium is produced from uh, from bauxites, and Australia is the global uh, leader of bauxite production, and uh, zinc uh, concentrates is the global source of uh, indium and germanium. Okay. Um, Re the Northwest Minerals Province and crowding in explorers, will a refining capability in Mount Isa be of value? Uh, that's a very non-geological question. Well, we, I think uh, from a department point of view, um, I think that's something that um, for Queensland we'd like to see, whether it's in Mount Isa or, a, or another precinct in, in Townsville. Um, but, you know, that's, a, that's an ongoing thing and it depends on a lot of different factors. And, um, but... But definitely, it would be great to see sharing of um, of a of a precinct in that regard by numerous explorers or numerous producers come to bear. All right, and then Stuart Parker is asking Vlad, have you looked at hafnium enrichment in Queensland? Is hafnium considered a critical mineral for Queensland? Uh, yes, hafnium is considered a critical mineral, but uh, no, have not looked at it specifically. All right, and then we have one more question in the chat. Um, do the Broken Hill type deposits like Cannington have elevated germanium and gallium as well? And uh, this is the next one uh, which we're going to look at, uh, but we don't have much results to discuss just yet. <laughs> 